Well, it's been a while. I've almost forgotten where we are. Ah, yes, the roof. And then we got to get started on the floor. This sawmill shed project is taking a little longer than I expected, but then all of my projects do. The roof is going slowly. First I have to cut trees, drag logs, mill them, and the slow part, routing grooves in the edges of each board so the rainwater that migrates toward the gap between the boards will be captured and go off the end of the roof. Half inch thick battens, about two and a half inches wide, cover both the gaps and the grooves. These boards are not treated with uh, waterproofing, not painted. We will see how it goes next time it rains. This is slow and tedious. It involves climbing three ladders. I can't get too far ahead because I need to be able to reach the middle of the battens to nail them into the purlin. No daylight. Good. What I've done here to take the banana curve out of some of these boards is I made an extra bunk. Uh, four and seven eighths high, 25 and a half long to fit between the rails to support the tip end of the boards to get both tips at the same level. Then I'll cut the top of the mountain off and have a flat edge, flip them over and cut the high ends out and then I will have straight boards which will make putting on the roof one heck of a lot easier. I have several boards in a bunch there. The saw cut is based on the narrowest board. Whoops. Well, there's an oversight. I need to get this. <laughs> I need wheel clearance. That should do it. I cut the strips that I'd already milled. I did not try to back the blade out through that long cut. I don't know how you ever catch up with this uh, tension in the wood. Um, did not touch the saw height. We'd cut that level once, but when I came back again just now, it had humped up some more because of the release of tension from cutting those strips off over there. Now we got these strips off over here. If I ran that saw down there again, I'd probably shave off a little more. But we'll quit right there, flip them over, and cut the high ends. Okay, it's router time. I first routed square grooves until that bit got dull. I didn't have another 3 8 straight bit, so I switched to a V.
Well, it's getting gray, starting to spit a little rain, and it's four o'clock. But I have enough roof up that I do not have to tarp my sawmill anymore. No sky showing through any of this. Any water that creeps under will be caught in the grooves, go off the end. None should come in here. Now I've had to be careful because there's a lot of knots near the edge of some of these boards. I've tried to uh, segregate those for clear out at the end where drips will be outside the shed, not inside. And there's a lot of curves in a lot of this stuff, so this is really would like it over here more keep leaves out of these things but uh, maybe I can fix that eventually when this is all done I will trim this off nice and neat screw on a uh, stringer underneath so that these are all sandwiched together snug and neat the way these are nailed by the way the roof boards get a nail at the front beam in the center and the back beam also in the center None in the purlin. Those are um, six penny nails. The battens get eight pennies because the extra length they need. They are between the boards, not through either one. Between the boards, nailed both beams and the purlin in the center. That should be enough to hold it together and allow shrinkage and movement, whatever it needs to do, and still keep my sawmill dry. What I want to do is build a floor in the sawmill shed, a continuous eight foot floor from this post line to that post line, and then I will have a nice dry wooden working area in my whole shed. Okay, another day. I shape the front ends of each log so they'll slide over the ground more easily. Still using a chain here. This is before I built my skidding cables. How did we do today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
I need a lot of 12 footers. Two of these are short. Uh, three of these are short. Ones that are 12 or can be made 12, I will cut them off with a chainsaw first to save trimming them later. This is what I brought down yesterday. Cut the blunt end off of this one already. That one's cut to exactly 12 feet. That's going to be roof boards. The one up here is more than 8 feet. I haven't cut it to length. This has got too much curve probably to make useful boards, but uh, it's too short for the roof. Got some really wavy cuts yesterday, not the conventional wavy, but uh, over the 12 foot length, cutting half inch thick battens, beginning and end a half inch thick, middle one eighth. A nice sweeping curve throughout. I think that's because we had a curve like this in the log, and every time you take some off, the curve of the log changes as you release tension. You need to pay more attention to that in the future. Also, instead of taking all the bark off, you just take it off in the area where the blade's going to go. My logs are full of dirt from being dragged off the mountain. Dirt and sawmill blades do not get along. Nine feet. Okay, good. Never used a quarter scale. Four quarters is just over an inch. Subtracting for curve.
By the time I get this log squared up, there's not going to be much left of it. Getting air bubbles in the water line, I will find a way to fix that, put that in a separate video. On to the next log. This one's considerably straighter. Check each one for a two foot overhang. And now my favorite part, and I'm sure it's your favorite too, pounding nails. Lots and lots of nails. The battens are not all the same width. I select the widest ones to cover the biggest gaps. Lots and lots of up and down ladders in this project. Good exercise. Keeps me young. Well, that's it. Out of boards. I'll make some more. I think this one. Probably not much good. It was straight when you cut it. Here is an example of how a log under stress reacts when turned into boards. Now this cant was up on uh, 90 degrees up on another side. I flipped it over, cut down just a little more because I need two and a half inch wide battens for the roof. So I was going to rotate it another 90 degrees and get those. But getting it down to two and a half, this is that cut. There's part of it. 
use the other end. Blade didn't touch the middle. But, for the moment at least, a little over two and a half. About the same. A little over two and a half. So it's the same thickness, but now when I turn it up 90 and cut off these half inch battens, what it's going to do is curl in the horizontal plane here. But when you cut trees growing on a steep hillside, it's constantly moving. The trunks are going to be curved. There's going to be an incredible amount of stress within the wood, which is balanced as long as the tree is uncut. As soon as you start slicing it, things start to get a little weird. Good thing I'm not in this for business. I did get some shelves up, and then I'm uh, making more roof boards. And I get to the end of squaring off this camp. One more pass. And what? My throttle came apart. Well, when I look down here, here's the bolt. Presumably, the nut is along here somewhere. So I think I need to come out with my metal detector. Well, there's too much metal in it. Bring my magnet out here. It's probably stainless. Well, I might have to bring both out here. Probably the nut fell off and it might have taken a god dang day. Or two. For the bolt to finally fall out. Certainly nothing felt different in the throttle that would tip me off that something was wrong. I not only need to find the nut, I gotta find a lot of washers and uh... Lo and behold, right there in my dust mask, which I was not wearing, as a breeze is carrying the dust away from my face. Here's all the parts right here. Okay, they're back on here in the correct order. I'm going to go get the, um, what do you call that stuff? Loctite. Do this right. Loctite. High strength. Don't normally use high strength, but uh, can't count on a dust mask being there to catch my parts every time. Good. The guard saved my blade from cutting into a steel log stop. What's interesting to me is the variation in thickness in the same scale throughout. Okay, we'll discount the first one because that was just getting rid of the wane. Um, that bottom one should be one and a quarter. It is one and one half. The rest should be approximately three quarters, but they should be the same, whether they're three quarters or not, that's three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, three quarters, and three quarters. Looking good. You can come down here to the end, however, seven eighths, three quarters, 
one half, one half, five eighths. Um, the stress in the wood. This last what? 20, 25 inches hanging free in the air. So as I cut, the stress changed the curve of the board, so this end curved down, giving me half inch, half inches down there, one and thirteen sixteenths there. One and nine sixteenths there. So I got one, two, three, four roof boards out of this. Maybe five. Yeah, I can get five. Five roof boards. So I got another thirty, another thirty inches of roof right there. Another twelve footer here that's not as big as that one. But that's for tomorrow. Ooh, it counts after six o'clock. Thought it was getting on towards five. So I'll put my tools away. A lot of these tools will live right here from now on. I'm trying to decide now whether to plug all those gaps in the back wall. Kind of thinking no. Uh, more light. There's two foot roof overhang back there, so I'm not going to get a lot of water blowing in. We'll see how it goes. At the end, I am doubling up to cover the gaps. No particular reason. Trying out a way to get small logs onto the mill without using my back. Notice how much the end of this cant has sprung up into the air as I've cut boards off it. I decided to try clamping the cant to the bunks. On this end though, I didn't notice the cant was up on that wooden log stop. Okay, pull up to the clamp, stop, wait till the blade stops, Put another clamp on the same bunk, but behind the blade before removing the clamp in front and proceed to the next clamp. Put on another clamp behind the blade. And through with that one back there. Got to remove this one. And put it down here. Again, because of the wane at the bunk, I did not notice this was not going all the way down flush with the bunk. This is going to cause a problem. Again, stop. Clamp behind the blade. And when I do that, watch this clamp closest to you. Now, the cant has slipped off that wooden log stop. So I'm pressing down not only on the cant, but I'm adding tension to the sawmill blade, pulling it down and out of line. So, when I start the mill, first thing it does is climb up to the level it needs to be at. No harm done, I got away with it.
saw that one curl up as the blade exited the kerf. The log's just a bit too small for the cant hook to grip it, so the rope makes it easier, although not by much. Almost finished. 16 inches left. Three sixes would be good. Normally, you rotate the log 90 degrees the other direction to put the flat side against the stops, giving you 90 degrees. The advantage of doing it this way is the blade enters clean wood, not dirty bark. What I have to do is run the router down the sides of these three. I have a tendency when near the end of a project of letting my mind wander ahead to what's next and I get careless. But on ladders, I force myself to pay attention to what I'm doing. Well, the roof is finished. Now is all we need is rain to let us know if it's any good. Next, we'll add a stringer under the front edge of the roof to tie it all together. And we'll finally get started on the floor. Thanks for watching.